So the 1950 U.S. federal census was released by the National Archives just a short time ago on April 1st, 2022. Um, But it was just a release of the digitized images of the census pages. The indexing of those records happens afterwards, and it's really the indexing that makes it possible, of course, for all of us to be able to search the records and find our families. So here to tell us about that really important indexing project to get all this done is Jim Erickson, and he is from Family Search, and they are heading up this project. Welcome to the show, Jim. Thank you, Lisa. It's wonderful to be here with you today. I am so thrilled that you're able to take a few minutes out. I know you guys are so busy. You know, you're right on the heels of Roots Tech just wrapped up. And um, now we're right here with the U.S. uh, federal census for 1950. Do you have somebody you're looking forward to seeing in that census record? Yeah, both of my parents um, will be there. My dad will be 20 years old. He turned uh, 21 that year after the census. My mom is 15. Uh, She will just have had her 15th birthday. And uh, I know where my mom was. Uh, She was in Salt Lake City. But I have no idea where my dad was in 1950. As a 20-year-old, he'd um, left college. And uh, I know that he had enlisted in the in the army but i don't know he also worked in san francisco for a couple of years i don't know if he'll be in san francisco or or exactly where he would have been in 1950 when the census was taken so so there's a a little mystery right there absolutely and the perfect example of why the indexing is so important because you'll be able to name search him when this is done. Um, Before we jump into that project, for those who are watching and listening who maybe aren't familiar or haven't used FamilySearch, tell us what FamilySearch.org does and offers up genealogists. FamilySearch is a nonprofit organization. Um, We were founded in 1894 as the Genealogical Society of Utah. Um, FamilySearch is uh, more of an Uh, more recent incarnation of the organization um, that kind of reflects uh, when we went online and when we started publishing uh, CD-ROMs in the 1990s. Um, We've been uh, microfilming and digitizing records since 1938. We started a worldwide um, project to go and collect records from around the world and microfilm was really the innovation that allowed us to store all those records in a in a, a library, um, you know, getting all of uh, a whole bunch of books or, or physical records in one location was difficult. Um, since then, all of our uh, record operations is now all digital. Um, we, we, from the inception to uh, the publication, all of our records are captured digitally now. Um, but we have worldwide operations uh, in hundreds of countries. Um, we publish over about a billion records a year, and as a nonprofit, we partner with uh, commercial entities who have a, an interest in, in profit because we know that they know how to innovate, and that also helps our resources go further uh, through partnerships with these commercial entities, which is uh, 1950 census is actually an example of of that sort of a partnership. Um, we're working on this with with Ancestry um, using the resources that they have. But um, Family Search has a collaborative family tree where you can see what others know about your family. Um, we have, uh, like I mentioned, uh, 10 billion uh, records that are online. We have uh, free resources to learn how to do family history. And uh, we really try to just bring people wherever they are um, to the experiences that can help them learn about their family. Wow, it's amazing how much it's grown. I remember the days of the CD-ROMs, right? With the record sets that we used to order. And uh, now, gosh, so much is available for free from home. I I know we uh, need to sign up for a free account, right, to use uh, the, the website and take advantage of the, uh, the records. I love the wiki. It's such a wonderful treasure trove of, of knowledge, I think, when it comes to genealogy research. 
Um, so let's talk about the most exciting and the newest record collection, which is the 1950 census. So when it's re when it was released, did you get all the images? And uh, we know that the National Archives archives released them. Does that mean instantaneous publication on FamilySearch.org? How did that work initially? Well, this was so ten years ago um, in in 2012 when they released the 1940 census. We were actually waiting at the National Archives with a van and and hard drives. Um, to, to transfer all of the data onto hard drives and to take them to our data uh, facility in Virginia. Um, this time, everything was available online. So everything was uh, downloaded and uploaded to our servers um, immediately. Um, they made that available. There was high demand. So that was one of the challenges that we faced was making sure that we were going to be able to download those images. Uh, over six uh, million images is a lot of images to, to be able to, to download. Um, and those images include records for 151 million people. So that's a lot of information um, at high quality um, resolution. So, so that was actually the first hurdle. And since we were doing this project, um, since we are doing this project with Ancestry, um, we also had to wait for Ancestry to do the same thing and download the images to be able to process them to create their computerized index with their own handwriting recognition technology that then came to us and makes it so much easier to uh, review an index as opposed to starting with transcription from scratch. So there are so many innovations that have taken place but from the National Archives, the online delivery of the images was one of those innovations. How fantastic to be able to do that online. I, I can imagine that speeding it up. And then you've got artificial intelligence, which is already impacting um, how we use genealogy websites, how we access digitized books, and, and here you are using it um, to, to help index the records. So. Give us an idea. I'd love to know kind of a comparison between um, the, the speed at which you indexed 1940, which I thought was pretty darn quick, to how that looks for 1950. That is a great question. And we're still learning how this is going to play out with the 1950 census. So the 1940 census, well, actually, let me go back. Um, so one of the first projects that we did as Family Search when we were publishing CD-ROMs was the 1880 census. The 1880 census took us more than a decade to press onto CD-ROM. Uh, it was a huge project, um, and it was crowdsourced. But but before the advent of the internet, it was sending um, packets and and physical papers around and then gathering them and then creating a CD-ROM. So we went from a project like that um, to doing the 1940 census, uh, you know, just over a decade later in a matter of about six months. So already the technology was, was, was just astounding um, what you're able to do just because of the internet. Um, now you have the artificial intelligence and the handwriting character recognition and and you have uh, innovations that we're doing with the crowdsourcing and all of a sudden you're able to take those tasks that were all human, um, I guess bounded by human capabilities and the need to have all these uh, people helping and you're now allowing the computer to do what the computer can do. So with the 1950 census, we are actually indexing or reviewing this automated index for every single field that was captured in the 1950 census. So it's way more data than we were dealing with with 1940. 1940, because of the cost and the time, um, we just wanted to make sure that we just had the most genealogically relevant fields captured. So occupation and, and some of those fields were seen as kind of extra fields. Um, but for 1950, we recognize that we can do a lot more in terms of the experiences that we can provide and that these other entities can provide. 
um, if we have a full index. So that's one of the, the big innovations. So it's going really well, um, and we have a goal to get it all done by Flag Day. So that's June 14th. So that will be about, about really two months from when we really got the project going um, and kind of came up to speed to its conclusion, if we can get there. Um, and that just depends on how many people come and participate. Um, there's more than one way to participate. So we feel like we have a lot of options and it's more accessible um, than it's ever been because of how recent it is. Recognizing handwriting from 1950s is not that different from recognizing handwriting from a week ago. It, you know, things haven't changed right. that dramatically. And so it's, it's a really accessible experience. And these are people that everybody knows. So it's kind of fun to come in and, and uh, see what you can find in those areas where your family is from. Exactly. Uh, before we talk about how people can kind of get involved in the project, you know, you said something which I, I hope that uh, everybody listening and watching really appreciates, which is every field. I mean, you must have gotten excited when you heard that that was really going to be possible. I know, just hearing it myself, I'm like, that's a game changer because now you can slice and dice data in so many ways. You can look up everybody who worked on the railroad or everybody who, you know, whatever the fields are that were filled out. Uh, what do you think the impact, will that, will that change anything about genealogy research? Yes, it, it will. Um, and not just genealogical research, but understanding yeah. the makeup of our country in 1950 um, and really understanding the, the history of our nation, um, because that is part of your family history, um, is enabled yeah. by capturing those additional fields. So being able to see... Um, you know, differences in income, um, differences in occupation from region to region, um, being able to easily see neighborhoods. Um, the address for the 1950 census is similar to the 1940 census in that it's a vertical capture down the side of the, the forms. Um, so that is something that just allows people to see what's there today if their house is still there. I mean, these are experiences that, that we've dreamed of, but without the index, it's impossible to provide that, that sort of a, an experience. And so now with the commercial entities and what we're trying to do, you're gonna have a lot of different experiences now that are unlocked and available um, because of these innovations and especially um, what Ancestry's en enabled us to do with this uh, computer-aided index that they've created. Since you're partnering together, is it available at Ancestry for free as well as for Family Search? Um, Ancestry will make their own business decisions, but yes, initially it'll be available for free. Um, they've opened up the 1940 census recently, and that that's been available for free. Um, right. I don't know what all their future plans are, um, but sure. it, will, it allows them a lot of flexibility. On, on how to how to how to do that. Of course, um, we make everything we can available for free at Family Search, and uh, and this is uh, again there's going to be a lot of different experiences that are available um, around this record set, and so it's exciting going all the way back to how the National Archives made it available. It's really democratizing the the records and allowing people. I think their goal is to just make it accessible to as many people as possible and then it's these other organizations that that have a vision for for what they can do with those records yes and you guys certainly had the vision around the indexing project that's something that is uh such a skill that you've all developed and really um fine-tuned um you've been able to crowdsource so much of what then becomes available to everybody so Tell folks how they can get involved, and, I, and I'm really interested in some of the changes. I was very excited to hear that people will be able to have, in a way, a more personal indexing experience. Tell folks about that. Yeah, so something that everybody wants to do when they come in and volunteer and get involved in a project is to find their own family. Now, yeah. 
this, just because of how quickly we're trying to get it done, that will be expedited. So when the index is published and available um, after it's been reviewed, everybody's going to have that wonderful experience. Um, but even on the review side, we've made it so people can search for a specific location down to the county level or in some cases down to the city level. And then you can actually search for a surname um, a last name within that location. Now, if your family hasn't already been reviewed, you'll be able to review it. If it has been reviewed, well, that just means that it's going to be published sooner um, because progress has already been made. Um, and then you can come back and review it. And if for some reason the person who reviewed it did it wrong, you can still make corrections. We do corrections on family search. Ancestry does corrections on Ancestry. And we are sharing whatever corrections are made on Family Search with Ancestry so they can get the benefit of any corrections that are made um, on our website as well. So oh, that's terrific. So where, yeah, where do they go to, yeah, well, to yeah, sign yeah, up I, and I help you? The, the question. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so for the 1940 census, we had 163,000 people come and help and get involved. And with how easy it is for 1950, we think that we'll have well over 200,000 people who will come and, and uh, want to review these names. So if you want to get involved, um, there are a couple different places you can go, but the easiest place to remember is familysearch.org slash 1950 census. Um, and on that page, there's a lot of information, but near the top of the page, there's a big link um, to uh, join the project and to come over and, and participate. The project is ongoing. Um, there are uh, all, all the states are, are there. Some have already been published. Um, but, but come and get involved and see what you can do. Um, it's going very quickly. It's, uh, people are really enjoying it. And uh, we're glad that it's coming along as quickly as it is. So familysearch.org slash 1950 census. Terrific. And, and Jim, they can do this from home, from their computer. Um, is there a certain minimum um, commitment that they have to make or a certain minimum amount of technological ability? No. So this is, again, one of the things that's kind of fun. Um, I, I mentioned it briefly before. There's actually more than one experience or way to participate. Um, the, the standard way that most people who've done it before want to participate is what we call the household review. The household review, um, we try to identify from the head of the house, all the members of the household or the family, to the next head of the house. And that can sometimes cross um, pages on the, the census forms. Um, and that is a, an every field review. And you can come in because of how it's set up now you can review as many of those fields as you want. And then the next person can come and pick up where you left off. So that, that's really fun. Now that does require you to be on a computer. The other task, well, there's two other tasks, but another one that doesn't require you to be on a computer, you can be on your handheld device, um, your smartphone, um, is what we call name review. So instead of reviewing all of the fields, um, you can download our app called Get Involved, so Family Search Get Involved. It's available on the, the iTunes store, the, the Apple store, as well as uh, from Google, um, the Android store. And uh, you can download the app and, uh, and you can just start looking at the images where the, we have the names of the people in the census. And then you can compare that with what the computer thinks it is. And you can either say, yes, that's right, or you can actually enhance or fix um, what the name is. And that you can do hundreds of these in an hour. Um, I've done yeah. it, it's a fun activity, it's really engaging. And if you like seeing that you're making a difference in terms of volume, um, it's a really fun way to participate um, again, the computer doesn't always get it right, so you have to be really careful in the review process, but it's super easy to just look at the image and look at the, the indexed value 
um, for the name and just make sure it's right. So, so it's really easy and you can do that online as well. Um, you don't have to have the app. And then the third task, so there's the household review or the family review, the name review, and then the other one is the header review. So every census image, every uh, census ledger has a header that includes all the location information and the information about the enumeration itself. And that's a separate task. And we broke that one out because, again, it's uh, the data is formatted differently. So if you want to go in and help us, those have to be done as well uh, to be able to, to publish the, the data set. So we'd invite you to come in and see what states um, still have the, the header review available and to help us finish out that as well. It's not, for a lot of people, it's not as exciting because it doesn't include the names of the people, um, but it still has to be done to be able to publish the reviewed index. I hadn't thought about the header, but boy, that's pretty important. If that's not right, then we get way off track pretty quickly. So uh, that includes our enumeration district number, the county number. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Jim, it sounds like you guys have really been innovating over at FamilySearch. We're grateful. We're grateful that you're giving everybody watching an opportunity to also give back a little bit. And we can all pull together and get this done by Flag Day. That sounds pretty great. So it's FamilySearch.org slash 1950census. And uh, Jim, again, thank you so much. And I sure hope we'll talk again even before the 1960 census, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Thank you, Lisa. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, and you'd like to learn more about how to find your family history, come to genealogygems.com. Uh, there at my website, you can sign up for my free email newsletter. It comes out each week. It will tell you all the new stuff that's happening, including the Genealogy Gems podcast and our videos and, of course, premium membership. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. I'll talk to you soon.